Hi and welcome to our lecture on planning. So far, we have discussed the contemporary workplace and the history of management. And these were introduced in order to understand where we've come from and where we need to go in management today. We're now going to move on to our functions of management. So there, as, there are four functions of management, planning, organising, controlling and leading. And in this, mini, in this mini lecture, we talk about planning. So at the end of this lecture, what I want you to be able to do is outline the approaches in establishing goals and developing plans, explain the types of plans that managers use, detail planning tools, techniques and processes that are useful to managers. Because all of these are absolutely essential in obtaining the objective, which is what planning is all about. So what is planning? Planning is the process of setting objectives and determining how you're going to accomplish them. It's that simple. So it's about saying, this is where I want to be and this is how I'm going to get there. It involves deciding exactly what you want to accomplish and what the best way is going to go. The first function of management is called planning because planning underpins everything. Without being able to set where we're going to go, we can't work out how we're going to measure it or how we're going to lead people there or how we're going to organise our organisation in order to achieve those goals. So planning comes first naturally, but it also underpins everything else. In order to plan effectively, we set objectives. So these objectives are specific results that someone wishes to achieve. So in 10 years, I want to be able to do X. And now this may relate to an individual, a group or a whole organisation. And as a manager, in every objective that you set, you need to be able to work out what level we're setting it at. As I mentioned, planning involves guiding the direction of other important management functions of organising, controlling and leading. So in planning, what we're really doing is setting the direction. Where do we want to go and how are we going to go get about it? Um, because ultimately, as I said, without a plan, we can't actually implement um, our organising, controlling or leading functions. In order to set a plan, there are five sequential action steps in the process. All right, so the first one is we need to define your objectives. Where do we want to go? The second one is determine where you stand in relation to those objectives. We then need to develop reg premises regarding our future conditions. So where do we want to go? How are we going to go? Uh, where are we now? And how are we going to get to where we want to be? Then we need to analyze and choose among alternatives. So. When we're trying to analyse how we're going to get there, there's going to be multiple ways in which we can get there. So we need to choose among those. And our fifth process um, step is to implement the plan and evaluate. All right. So without a plan, we can't evaluate. That makes sense. Um, so in order to set objectives, we use this thing called the SMART model. So the SMART model actually starts to unpack what an objective should look like. It should be specific, measurable, actionable, reasonable and timetabled. For an objective to be specific, they need to be clearly defined. They need to be able to tell me what exactly you want me to be able to do to get to where you want to be. They need to be measurable. They need to be able to have an output that I can say, am I getting there or am I not getting there? They need to be actionable. I need to be able to go to my employees and go, okay, you need to do X, Y, and Z. They need to be reasonable. When I go to my employees, they need to be able to feel like they can do it. And I need to be able to know that I can do it. So if you're going to set unreasonable targets, then you're not going to get a great response from a manager. And finally, they need to be timetable. So I need to know when everything needs to be done in order to achieve that outcome. Uh, long-term goal, right? So we start to unpack each of these objectives in a different way um, in order to get the desired outcome. To get to objectives, we have to do lots of different types of plans. So let's take us through the different types of plans that organisations use. So there are strategic plans and strategic plans in organisations define long-term needs and set actions um, that are directing the organisation to where we want to be in the future. So for example, it will say, 
Griffith in 2023 will be the leader of X, Y, and Z. It's a very long-term goal. Tactical plans are our strategic plans implementation process. So for example, they are the ones that say, okay, in three years, I expect you to do X, Y, and Z. Um, because this, is, this starts to unpack how we use our resources to put the strategies into action. Now, if you think about in our contemporary um, management lectures, we talked about how organizations are part of an open system. And in that open system, there are resources we get from the um, input from the external environment, the transformation process happens, and then there's an output. A tactical plan helps us by working out how we're going to use those resources and combine them in order to get to that long-term goal. All right. There are also operational plans. And an operational plan is the day-to-day -day plan of how we're going to achieve our tactical and our strategic plans. And these are things like production plans, financial plans, facility plans, <coughs> marketing plans, and HR plans. All right, so basically it says, I'm going to be able to deal and do X by using these resources, for example. We also have these things called policies and procedures. Now, policy is a standing plan that communicates the broad guidelines for decisions and actions. It may say, the policy of um, employees within Griffith University is that they do not accept gifts from um, students, for example, or any of our um, suppliers. And our procedure is if we get a gift offered to us, this is how we go about it. We do one, two, three, four. Um, and it starts to unpack exactly how we approach work in order to enact that pro policy. So policy is that broader plan of what our expectations are. Procedures are the operational guidelines as to how to do an actual job. Now, in organizations, there are small and large and medium organizations in terms of sizes. You will find that in small organizations, particularly family businesses, there's not that many procedures. However, in large businesses, this is where we become more bureaucratic. We more bureaucratic means more procedures, more policies, more this is the way we do things here. Um, and that's important because as a board of director, um, if I sit on the board, I'm the one going to jail for what my frontline employees do, for example. So if I don't have proper procedures and policies in place, then you know, I'm making myself liable here. So it's important for us to set those expectations. Um, but on a positive note, it also allows people to understand how we do business, and that's really important. <coughs> At an organisational level, there's also budgets and project schedules that we can create. So a budget is simply how we're going to commit resources to get to the desired outcome. So it might be, I've got a budget of $2 million. To create that output, I need to put training, staffing, I need to uh, buy things, I need to um, do quality checks, etc. And without a budget, I don't know what I'm really aiming at. So this is where your measurable targets come from. Okay, so we're starting to really unpack there's finances that, we exist, uh, that exist in organisations and we need to know how we're going to use those um, resources effectively and efficiently. There's this also this thing called a zero-based budget. Now, a zero-based budget basically says, I'm going to allocate resources as if it was brand new to a project because I don't know what it's going to cost, ultimately. Um, and that's something that organizations do do if they're innovating because they really don't know. Project schedules are also used in management. And a project schedule is almost like, well, it's similar to a Gantt chart where you've got activities down one side and the timeline across the top. And it says, these are the steps that I need to do to get that project happening. Um, they're single use, they only apply to this particular project or outcome. And as a result, I, these are how I'm going to measure whether or not I'm going to get there on time. So they're another type of plan that we use. All right, so in the next mini lecture, we're going to be unpacking planning tools and techniques. So I look forward to talking to 